and welcome again to PR Presents. Hope you've all been keeping well. Now, spring 2020 was billed as a momentous time for me as I'll be graduating from Birmingham City University. Safe to say though, it wasn't quite the finale I had in mind because along with my media degree, I was also cast into my first acting role since the age of 11. And that's been a few years. And I'm pleased to be joined today by the man who gave me that opportunity, the director and owner of JT14 Productions, Josh Thomas. How are you? Hello there. How are you doing? Well, Josh, we'll start off then with some background information about yourself. You graduated from BCU in summer 19 with a media degree, and you've just finished your MA there as well in media production. Where does your passion for drama fit into this? It came from quite a while ago, actually. I mean, since I was around about 16, so this was when I, was, when I had uh, finished uh, school, I wanted to do something which wasn't in that school. I wanted to actually go to college and um, do something a little bit different. And I just knew that I was quite interested in, you know, film, television, um, all that stuff, basically. So I was looking at, you know, I remember there was a period in which I was looking at many different directors, uh, filmography. So I was looking at the likes of Steven Spielberg, uh, Peter Jackson, you know, just, just many different film directors. And I just thought, there, there was a time which I thought, yeah, I want to be a film director. I'm wanting to actually do something. I want to create a story. Um, they're not just a written down story. I'd like to create something a little bit visual. Yeah. Um, so then I went into doing Northampton College, was there for about three to four years and ended up coming to BCU as a result of that, as a result of, you know, getting what I needed to get in. In, in terms of drama, I think it's just about, you know, creating, it, it's one of those ideas in which you can just be creative with, in which you can just be, in which you can just have the passion, um, find influence from, um, and make sure that you are influencing other people as well as a result of them looking at your drama. So it stems from a lot of things, basically. I mentioned there about you casting me into your production, which is called Be Beneath the Bridge. Tell the audience what this is about. Yeah, I've always been interested in, you know, doing a, doing a drama that followed, like, teens. And, you know, in terms of, you know, the dark time, times of teens rather than the, um, you know, stereotypical, you know, school teen drama that you would normally see on Netflix or anything like that. But um, with this one, um, there's a tiny bit of it, a tiny, tiny bit of that, but there's not too much of it because what it's about is um, a young girl who's aspiring to become a rapper. Her name is B, Bianca Bradley. But because of her passion, because of, you know, just who she is at school, she gets bullied. She gets uh, picked on by these uh, three girls and, she's, and she takes this to heart. Um, it's more about the mental side of things rather than the physical. So you don't get too much of, you know, what uh, the three girls do to her physically. It's more about, you know, just how she feels mentally and how that has an effect. It's more about, yeah, just the mental side of bullying, but also the ambition to do stuff. Not um, that everything isn't quite as smooth sailing as you'd expect. I mean, it's not like, yeah, you have, um, yeah, you have ambitions to become something big. But the, in order to get over, in order to do that, and also reach there, you need to be able to overcome these obstacles, these sort of situations that are in the way. And it's not just focusing on her, but it's focusing on the people around her as well, which I definitely think is important when you know speaking about bullying, anti-bullying, cyberbullying, any type of bullying, basically, yeah. Now, we're winding back to March this year, and of course, lockdown halted us just at the time when the cast were building a rapport with each other, lines were being learnt, and you yourself did several photo promo shoots. What contingency plan have you put in place for this production to still happen? This script is going to be definitely restructured because we're not only able to go to you know, someone's house and film or go to a school and film or go to university no. and film. So what we need to do now is definitely see if it see what would happen if people were able to film whilst they were in their own houses whilst they were and you know be able to do this through zoom call or be able to record this through their phones because there have been dramas that have done that and i remember watching a specific drama on itb um i think it's called like isolation stories in which you know there were dramas that were being recorded through the use of mobile phones, laptops, um, 
e even their own cameras. And once everyone is able to get back in touch with me, then you know we are able to speak about what to do for this drama. So it's still possible, and even with this COVID-19, it's, it's one that we shouldn't actually give up on. As well as writing your own dramas, I understand you've been doing some film critiquing for a website called Letterboxd. What films have you reviewed so far? So recently I've done The Exorcist, um, and that's like a rewatch. So I did first watch The Exorcist, um, it was a while back actually, I think it was like around about two years ago. I recently just, you know, got completely knocked out by it because now I understand what the uh, truth and the film is about because it has so many hidden messages, so many different meanings and <clears throat> and it is scary and, I'm like, and I can understand why people are saying that it is one of the best horror movies of all time. So yeah, The Exorcist is one. Um, There's a science fiction film called Arrival, which was in 2016, which at first, which again had to take me, you know, twice before I was able to understand it. And again, you know, being able to understand films a second time, you're able to get so much out of it and you're able to see what the film is actually trying to do. But the main reason I want to get into film critiquing is because, you know, I've watched a lot of films and, you know, I have different opinions about films and I'm interested in knowing other people's opinions about films. And I usually analyse whilst watching. Now, some people think that analysing, you know, while watching isn't fun, but no, no, it's, it's, actually, it's actually pretty interesting. And, you know, you're, you're still able to enjoy yourself. You're not, you, um, it's not that you take a ploy face and you just say, okay, this film has this, this film has that, rather than just sitting back and, you know, enjoying it with a bucket of popcorn and something like that. You're, you're watching it, you're analysing the detail of it, but you're still able to keep focus on the story, on the characters, on the direction, and there's so much um, that you're able to get out of it at the end of the day. And has this critiquing actually helped you be more discerning when writing your own productions? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, because I'm able to understand, you know, what the uh, storyteller or the filmmaker is actually trying to do with them. And sometimes when it comes to filmmaking, you're, uh, you're learning off of different films or directors or writing and you're able to put that um, across to your own. It's not necessarily copying, but you know, you get inspired and you know, you try to think of the different ways in which you can tell the story. I mean, even with uh, Be Beneath the Bridge, um, some of it does take um, aspiration from a film that came out recently called uh, Eighth Grade, which, you know, is more about, you know, anxiety, more about, you know, what's, and about being an introvert, about being, not alone with nothing but your own thoughts. We'll finish off then, Josh, with your wider aspirations to become a director. Have you sent any of your shows off yet to any TV commissioners? Or is your plan to build a bigger portfolio at this stage for JT14 Productions? I mean, I know that I've created a lot of stuff in the past, so whether that's with university, whether that's outside of university, I've, I've been able to merge them all in showreel and put a few of them just on uh, my website as well. Uh, in terms of sending them over to TV commissions, I haven't done that as of yet. However, there are some ideas that I would like to put a little bit more forward. Um, I'm interested to see what would happen with Be Beneath the Bridge, for example. I mean, these being, you know, these probably would be now short dramas, but you know, if that would be captured by anyone, I'm not going to say anyone in specific, but anyone that's you know would be able to showcase that, I think I think that would just be fantastic. So you know, I'm all about creating new things and seeing whether it would be commissioned by someone and broadcasted by someone. Um, yeah, I definitely got a lot of ideas in the pipeline. Um, you just have to see what they're all about. Well, Josh, as ever, it's been fantastic to catch up with yourself and all the very best of luck for JT14 Productions. And uh, yeah, here's hoping that circumstances will allow me to complete my role in Be Beneath the Bridge. Well, that's it for today, folks. So do take care of yourselves out there and tune in again soon for more PR Presents. <laughs>